Hey folks, Rocco here from Simmer.io. I ran into an interesting problem with Unity WebGL builds when I was actually trying to download an image from the internet. And I thought I'd distill that down into a little um, demo so that I could show you how to get around this nasty error called the cores error. So the repository for this is actually located at GitHub and I'll share that in the comments. And let's open up Unity right now in order to actually see this in action. So this is a pretty simple Unity uh, stage here. We have a canvas with an image on it. And the image itself uh, is going to load up with this uh, URL here, roccobalsamo.com slash image slash profile dot jpg. So let's actually see this in action. So we actually just slap a texture on here, and that's actually coming from this website on the internet. It's my personal website. So anyway, let's take a look at this code. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, all we do is we create a new www object, uh, a new texture here, and we uh, wait for the www to return, and we create uh, a new texture for that game. So let's see what happens when I export this to WebGL. Okay, we're back. Here we are loading up the game and we get this nasty error here. It says uh, memory access out of bounds. Uh, that's not actually the real error. And this will help you if you're debugging WebGL in any context, but you want to bring up the developer tools. It's Command Option I on Mac, and I think it's Control Shift I on Windows. Okay, so we get all this nasty memory access out of bounds, but the actual real error is up here. It says access to XML HTTP request. Uh, from origin, uh, localhost, something, something has been blocked by the course policy. There's no access control allow origin header present on the requested resource. So, you know, this is not something that um, you would just be able to figure out uh, easily. And, and what we need to do is we need to create uh, another server that actually serves this image with this particular header on it. Um, this is a web security thing. So you could imagine that I'm running my website. I don't necessarily want everyone to pull images in off of my site. So by default, most web servers are set up to have this uh, access control allow origin off. So let me uh, explain this in a little bit more detail. Close that off and created some images for this. So let's say there's an image on roccobalsamo.com. Let's just show that. This is the actual image that I was using. Copy image address, and I'll paste it over here. Okay, there's my image right there, right? So we'll come back over here to my little um, uh, display for how this actually is going wrong. So let's say my game is running on roccobalsamo.com and the image is also on roccobalsamo.com. I will not get that error. I haven't actually shown this, but I know it to be true. And now let's assume I have an image on roccobalsamo.com and our game is running on either localhost as it is right now or on simmer.io or some other website, but our image is on roccobalsamo.com. roccobalsamo.com does not add this header here, this access control allow origin star. So what we need to do is we need to have an intermediate server here, right? So we need a server here that requests the image from roccobalsamo.com, adds this header, and then uh, serves the image to the, the client um, being our game. So you noticed in the last frame, I had a big question mark there. And, you know, in terms of a uh, game developer, you know, the idea of setting up a server to add these headers, is actually pretty tough. So what I found is this service called FileStack, and they actually inject 
this access control allow origin star into the header. So let's take a look at the file stack dashboard. Um, they do have a free plan that you can use to test this out. Um, so I want to go into in their dashboard image transformations. I think I just or I'll, I'll click over here transform. And so the purpose of, of file stack is really to do things like rotate, resize, crop, flip, etc. But I did notice this interesting side effect of it adding the correct headers. So here's an image here and here's that URL for that image. And I'll go ahead and click this. Right. And this wasn't completely clear from that little page there. But if you dig down into the documents, you can see that you can replace this little last bit here with my URL for my image. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this here and let's go into the image. And I'm going to paste this piece of the URL at the very end. So now this is getting the picture of me uh, with that cores enabled. And one quick way to test this out is uh, test cores. I'm just going to search. Um, let's see. I actually like this second one when I was going through this stuff. So first, let's grab the regular image, right? Um, that's going to be this one right here. And I'll go ahead and paste this in. Test now. And let's bring up another version of this, right? I'm going to bring this up and we will grab the file stack version. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into uh, our URL here. And if I scroll down, I now see this access control allow origin star there. And on this other one here, I do not have that. So what this does is this adds the header and um, you will now be able to pull that image and use it in, an, in a Unity game. So let's go ahead and grab the URL one more time. This is the file stack URL. And in Unity, I'm going to go ahead and attach that to this canvas here. Actually, not the canvas, but the image below the canvas. So here's the URL right now. I'm going to paste that long file stack URL in here, and I'm going to go ahead and build this and see what happens. So here we go. This is the Unity build, and it pulled in that picture of myself from the web without that nasty cores error. So this is just one of the few things that happens when you make a WebGL build. And, you know, being that I'm a web programmer by trade, I thought it would be nice to share this. Perhaps you have an idea to include random textures from the web into your game or something of that nature, maybe like an avatar or something like that. Um, it's a really webby thing to do and a great thing for Unity WebGL. But you have to know about this um, this cores business and how to get around that problem. And for this particular problem, we didn't actually need to set up a full server. We just use this service uh, file stack right here. Real quick, uh, Simmer.io is a website for sharing WebGL games. I'd love to have you share something. And I also have a course available online that goes into topics all about Unity and WebGL. And I'll put a link to that with a great discount at the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe and I really appreciate you watching the video.